Hi there and welcome to another ALCO trading strategy testing video. This time another strategy that is supplied by the Fractrade developers, the BIN HV45 strategy. Let's find out if it's worth your money to trade. In this video I'm going to test another strategy that is coming from the Fractrade GitHub repository. It's called the BIN HV45 strategy. Don't ask me why it's called like this, but ask the original author Berlin Guy in CA. I did not upload much content recently because I was busy building my own backtesting appliance based on the Fractrade bot, so a lot of manual work now is automated. Which gives me more free time to test different strategies and make content for you. And since I did not have tested all the Fractrade provided strategies yet, I still have some work to do. Now I already scanned these ELCO strategies and found out that some of them are just for demonstration purposes or are examples and are not really serious attempts to be trading algorithm. So I won't test these, but later I will probably mention them in a separate blog post or so. I said this time I'm going to test the bin HV45. So let's scan the code and roughly see which indicators it uses and how it determines buy and sell signals. To get this strategy, you can go to the Fractrade's GitHub repository and select the strategies repo. Here you will find this strategy in the folder of Berlin Guy in CA. If I open this file, I already see that at the top that the Bollinger Bands is created in this function. This function takes in three arguments, stock price, which is a pandas data frame containing the stock price data, window size, which is the number of periods used to calculate the rolling mean and standard deviation, and number of standards, which is the number of standard deviations used to calculate the lower bands in this case. Then a little bit lower here, in the strategy class, the time frame for this strategy is set to 1 minute. Now unfortunately I only test the 1 day, 4 hour, 1 hour, 30, 15 and 5 minute time frame. So hopefully these time frames will also suffice. But if the strategy performs well enough on these lower time frames, perhaps I will download this 1 minute time frame uh, to see as well if it proves to have higher chances of success. Now the stop loss set here is to 5% loss and the minimal ROI is set to take profit at 1.25% profit. Which seems to me that this is a scalping strategy. So every time a signal is generated, a buy decision is made and after a small profit the trade is closed again. This small section here determines the spaces to use when optimizing the buy settings for the strategy. So apparently I can optimize this strategy even further in a later stage. In the populate indicator section, the data frame and its columns are defined here. Here the Bollinger indicator of the Qt Pylib is used and the upper, mid and lower bands are set in the data frame. Then there is the Bollinger bands delta defined which is the absolute difference between the middle and lower Bollinger bands. Also a price delta is set that is the absolute difference between the open and close price. And a close delta is set which is the absolute difference between the current and previous close price. And finally there is a tail defined and this is the absolute difference between the close price and the low price. So as you can see all kinds of comparisons in this section. Let's find out how they are used to define the buy and sell signals. In the entry signal definition the signal is true if all these conditions are met. So let's take a look at them line by line. Here the lower Bollinger Bands of the previous row is greater than zero. And the absolute difference between the middle and lower Bollinger Bands should be greater than the product of the close price and the delta valued divided by 1000. And in this line the absolute difference between the current and previous close prices uh, should be greater than the product of the close price and the close delta value divided by 1000. 
Here the absolute difference between the close price and the low price should be less than the product of the middle and lower Bollinger Bands and the tail value divided by 1000. Also for a buy signal, the close price should be less than the lower Bollinger Bands of the previous row. And the close price should be less than or equal to the previous close price. So a lot of comparisons and I do not know exactly the philosophy behind these ones, but if they are all true, then a buy signal is generated. Unfortunately for us, to keep things simple, there is no sell signal in this strategy. Only the sell signal from the ROI or stop loss. Now before I invest a lot of time to find out what this all means, let me backtest this strategy first and see what the results are. If it performs really well, then I'll consider analyzing these buy settings more to understand why they do what they do. Okay, so the initial backtest results are not that great. Over all the time frames I normally test, this strategy performs pretty poorly. The 30 minute time frame seems to perform the best with a win rate of 78%. It still manages to make losses overall though. The only reason I can think of is that the stop loss setting is set too wide in comparison to the small take profit points in this strategy. And if I take a closer look to the output of this time frame, I indeed see that the small amount of stop loss exits has a greater negative result than the large amount of ROI take profits here. And this is kind of logical since the stop loss is slightly 5 times larger than the take profit points. So for each loss there has to be at least 5 wins to get a break even. And also the stop loss might be too tight in comparison with the volatility of crypto. So this point can be easily hit and causes an unnecessary losing exit. I think in this case parameter optimization should hopefully fix this issue. And also determine better settings for these two parameters so that they can perform better overall. So let me optimize the buy, ROI and stop loss settings here and see if I can improve this strategy. After optimizing the ROI, stop loss and buy indicator settings, the strategy finally is making some profits. However, it comes at a price and the win rate and drawdown get worse. But the overall other ratios get better, which is logical of course because it changed from a losing to a winning strategy. Now let's see a small snippet of the improved hyperop results why this is so. If you are familiar with the frag trade bot, then you already might know that the hyperop output always calculates 3 ROI take profit settings at 3 calculated time periods in the future. It also always returns one stop loss setting, which in this case went from a 5% to over 30% stop loss. If the ROI reaches almost 70%, profit here, then it sells the position. So in this case the stop loss doesn't get triggered quickly and also at least one take profit point takes more profit than the stop loss loses. You can see from this backtest output that there are still significant losses when the stop loss gets hit, which I find a little bit disturbing. But the amount of ROI profit takings looks good to me but it's only being dependent on the ROI to take profit, which is also a little bit on the meager side in my personal opinion. If I compare the charts of these two backtests, then I can see where the differences are. The chart I show here is the initial backtest chart. First of all, I'd like to mention here that for the 30 minutes time frame, I limited the backtesting period to the start of the last bull market to the 1st of January from this year. Every time I tested this time frame over larger time spans, it errored out on me. So that's why you see the flat line here first. But as you can see, from the beginning of the backtest to the end, the strategy was in the red and never really got out of it. There was a period that there were more gains than losses and even almost a small break even point during the first run up of the last bull market. But then it started to lose again as you can see on the profit chart. It's also remarkable that there were coins that were in the top 50 of January 2022 but they were consistently losing money with this strategy. 
That is why I also include the applicability score in my league, to see how well a strategy fits over all the crypto pairs. And after adjusting the parameters with the hyperparameter optimization, you can see that the strategy performs totally different. Now from the same beginning of the backtest period, it steadily makes more money. But during the end of the last bull market, there was a sudden drop in profits. And you can also see in the parallelism chart that a lot of trades were happening over there. Which probably caused this crash in profits. But more analysis is needed to make the right claims about what happened here. Nonetheless, after this drop, the strategy again slowly climbed to higher profits. But at some stage, less and less trades were made, so this line flattens out at the end. Also see how the profit per pair graph spreads out and how difficult it is to have consistent profits over all pairs this time. The majority of these pairs is positive, but with some of these very negative exceptions on the total profitability, the total results is lower than might be possible. So knowing this, let's take a look on how this specific strategy scores in my strategy league. Comparing this strategy to the earlier tests I did, you can see that it's not really worth your time to seriously invest time investing the code further. My personal opinion is, is that if a strategy does not perform well right away, then it is a good opportunity to learn some coding experience, but not much more. Also, my experience up until now is that scalping strategies only perform well under certain market conditions. If there is no general indicator to confirm if these specific market conditions are met, then the strategy trades under all circumstances, so also the ones that do not benefit this strategy. It might be so that the idea behind this algo has the correct assumptions, but it should be tested against these specific market circumstances and then try to create a measure to confirm these optimal circumstances. It could even be so that scalping both ways, and by that I mean also going short with futures in negative trends as well, could also perform this strategy's performance. But again, the circumstances should be determined and also act as an additional confirmation indicator. But implementing this in this code, I'll leave that challenge to somebody who wants to put the effort and time to make these improvements. In the meantime, I will be searching and testing other existing algo strategies. And therefore, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!